Does the Asian nerd stereotype come from reality or media? There's a hot debate online right now. Let's talk about it. Yeah, this discussion was going viral on Reddit. There were so many, many discussions going on. Why is it so bad to be an Asian nerd in America? Is being a nerd even bad? How come white nerds seem like they have it better than Asian nerds? What is the cause of it? Is it society? Is it Hollywood? Is it the parents? Is it the STEM subjects? Is it just our culture? And then, of course, there was even arguments way outside of that. Joining us today for this complicated discussion all the way from L.A., we got one of the original Hop Hop boys, Nelly Nell Chan in the building. What's good, man? It's always good to be back in New York and have these type of hot topics and discussions with y'all, man. Yeah, Andrew, we got to get into it, right? Because uh, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, because this is a topic that uh, gets brought up quite often. Yeah, I'm sure this is not the first or the last video that we're going to make about this. But yeah, let's go through the four main points that you need to understand about this topic when you're discussing uh, being an Asian nerd in America. And then also at the end, I might tell you why I think being an Asian nerd in America is great right now. All right. It's a great time to be an Asian nerd. Real quick, I think we have to establish, Andrew, this Asian nerd stereotype, particularly for East Asians, has been around for 40 years Literally, this is the Time Magazine cover in 1987. Of course, there were still a variance. You still had your Chad good-looking nerds up there, and then you got, you know, some of the nerdier nerds at the bottom of it. But uh, basically- Some of people, those kids play tennis. Yeah, some of the yeah. kids were, like, better-looking nerds and other ones but it doesn't matter anyway what i wanted to talk about was just like a lot of people feel like this stereotype has been forced onto the asian american community and a lot of people are always reacting to it whether they're buying into it whether they're rebelling against it whether they accept it reluctantly but they have a bad life so we got to get into four different points like i said this is such a complicated topic we're not going to be able to break it down 100 percent, but we're going to get into what we can i would say this number one andrew being a nerd in America is particularly polarizing for Asian guys in the sense that everybody's always imagining the fat kid from lookism or you're like a 10 out of 10 ratchet Kevin Wynn. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, why is that? Why does it seem like there, it's always like, it's never going to be the fusion person who's like five out of 10 on both, who's like distributing their identity equally. It's always going to be the people on the extreme ends of the spectrum that get characterized in media or even online. Well, I would say that definitely Asian nerds in media are only depicted as super nerds. Like they're the side character. They're they don't they're not also athletic. They're not also the hero. They're usually uh, the butt of the joke. Everything like that. Right now, I will say that there are some examples of like white heroic nerds, kind of like a Spider Man, Peter Parker type thing. But there's not. That's also not the main thing either. Most people like to have one or the other. And this is where we can blame media, where we know that there have always been, if you know enough Asian people, always been like athletic Asian nerds, right? A little, like Captain Jeremy of the- Jeremy Lin, for example, right? He went to Harvard. He scored <laughs> high on his eight. Like Jeremy is all, by all means, went to a NBA. nerd, but he's also, you know, a great basketball player. So it's kind of like, I think that that, it doesn't get shown enough, and I think this is where you can blame me. Do you think people end up buying into that? Like, because you know some people, Nell, you grew up in an Asian neighborhood. You knew mm -hmm. people who are both, probably both ends of the extreme spectrum, but also in the middle, right? Yeah, I think going back uh, into social media, we're not, like, glorified in that middle range area where, like, you know, we're not a 10 out of 10 nerd or, like, you know, a 10 out of 10, like, F-boy, right? But there's no really, like, public figure for that in that middle area for us. Yeah, I would say, for example, for, like, white nerds, you've got, like, Jeff Bezos, who's, like, mm -hmm. winning, winning, right? He's got, like, a lot of uh, women, good daily Elon life. Musk. Elon Musk. The Winklevoss twins. It seems like the elite white people, they almost are, like, both. They could be, like, a 10 out of 10 brainiac, but then they're, like, a 10 out of 10 Chad at the same time. But, like we said, Andrew, for Asians, that archetype doesn't really exist yet. And those people, maybe if they do exist, they haven't been thrust into the limelight. Right, so right, I think right. that that is one of the things that is uh, noteworthy about point number one. Oh, Andrew, I did also notice even people who had to play Asian nerds in media, for example, like Jacob Balaton from uh, Spider-Man. Spider -Man. You know how he's playing, like, a computer yeah, yeah, hacker yeah. and Peter Parker's friend? but he didn't really get girls. He, in his own life, wants to get, like, really cool and almost looks like a DJ now in, like, the DMC championships. Yeah, I mean, I think in media in America, uh, they it's easy to thrust, like, Asians or minorities into nerdy roles or into roles that they just want to see because I think in America, actually, there are, like, so many archetypes of people. There's archetypes in America that don't even, that rarely exist in, in Asia or that are definitely not glorified, right? Kind of like your huge, stocky, like, buff, nice gentle giant like those are some of the people in asia but they never really get you're movie saying there's roles. no equivalent of like the rock or dave bautista in asia yeah there's no even like chris hemsworth mark Wahlberg, these kind of like ruddy stocky kind of heroes and heartthrobs um interestingly enough point number two in asia 
I think being a nerd, because it is, to be honest, uh, more academic, more scholarly, more part of the inborn Asian culture, Andrew, there's more shades of nerdism in Asia than there is here. So not only do Asians get shoved into like a zero one binary in America, where it's like you're either an F boy or you're a nerd boy. In Asia, I think there's way more shades of nerd. Yeah. Well, well, it's not shocking that in Asia, they're going to more glorify nerds or being kind of nerdy is already like the status quo. Like everybody's maybe just a little bit more nerdy in Asia for the most part, right? Because uh, that's what they value. And that's kind of right. where society is built out of, right? Maybe the sports systems are still catching up to America. Maybe the the fight systems or, or right. all this, the entertainment systems are. No, you play pro ball in Asia. You would say the pro ballers in Asia are not nearly as elevated in status as the pro ballers in America, right? No, oh, 100% not. I don't think that's like what they value or like what it's like what they want just based off you know, the upbringing and the, like the, you know, the parental system and stuff like that. It's just like they just want to be they like to do what they like to do. But but like at the end of the day, they want to be successful in other ways. Yeah, like, I think they don't it, look at pro basketball as like, oh, yeah, I'm tight. I'm cool. I'm a celebrity. Yeah. Like they don't I don't think they value that as much. I would say that to your point, like like you were saying, like, you know, your kid being really good at math and your kid doing like all these extra workbooks. In Asia, that's not looked down upon like it is in America. I'm not yeah. saying that some parents wouldn't look up to in America, but other parents would be like, oh my gosh, your kid's not going to be popular at school. Like, that's like the standard. Yeah, they <laughs> think that's tight. Yeah, for <laughs> they, real. They think it's good in Asia. My and, kid loves math. Yeah. Yeah. I would say overall, American culture is not nerdy. Like, even though there's a lot of nerds in America and nerds like to come here and, and study, I really don't think that American culture, at least pop culture, yeah. is nerdy. I agree with you. America has always needed nerds on a back-end, invisible, structural level mm -hmm. to maintain economic and technological dominance in the world. But it has never on a pop cultural level ever valued nerds. Look at like Marilyn Monroe or look at like Elvis or James Dean. Yep. These people were famous because they were like swaggy and yep. said swaggy things and like smoked cigarettes. They were not famous. And do crazy things. <laughs> yeah. And even like Albert Einstein, people go, oh, yeah, that was a great American scientist. He was from Germany. He's Jewish. <laughs> he wasn't even American, okay? He had a crazy accent. Um, moving on, Andrew, in the U.S. particularly, there's a good transition to talk about U.S. culture. Why do you think it is in the U.S.? And I think that every culture has this, but in the U.S., there's a particular desire for a tamed wildness, but mm -hmm. they want the wildness. And maybe I think there's a reason why that, quote, unquote, like nerdy people that are hyper stereotypically nerdy in America yeah. have such like a, are viewed as like, I guess, not desirable to hang out with. Mm -hmm. It's like, what, is it because they lack the wildness and they lack the unpredictably factor or what? I think there's a couple of things they could be looked at. They're, they're not cool. They're, you know, kind of sheltered. They're not confident and uh, they're boring. They're not fun. But I mean, like I said, society's perception of nerds is that's not how it really are, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like books written on why women are kind of attracted to bad boys um, because they're like masculine, they're dangerous, they're kind of mysterious. And if you can tame a bad boy and bring the good out of him, that's almost like an accomplishment, yeah. right? right. Uh, and, and, and maybe it works a little bit differently for how men kind of perceive women. But basically, like, yeah, America is a great country to be a bad boy. <laughs> Is it a great country to be a nerd? I also still think it's a pretty good country to be a nerd in, but it's definitely not the best country. And definitely the people who are using America for its freedoms the most, I think would be considered like bad boys. Like these, oh, man. like the guys who are not running the system, but they're using the system. And they're kind of like these uh, cool, like, you know, guys who are on the edge doing edgy things, but like, because I mean, it's even American look at freedom. how like uh, Cyclops, Cyclops get what he gets played out by Wolverine, right? Doesn't Wolverine take Cyclops' chick in X Men? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. in he Asia, takes, they would yeah. like never allow that storyline. They would be like, "No, that is so bad for the society." <laughs> like the Cyclops is who everybody should try to be like. <laughs> why does the why why do we make the bad boy? get the top girl you know they, they maybe don't, don't. the the top scoring guy on the test should get the top girl <laughs> i'm not saying uh that the bad boys in asia don't get something too but it's a smaller niche right yeah, they don't promote it for sure man They're for sure they for don't sure. promote it's, it's, it for it's, sure it's, man they don't throw I, it at the top of the you know priority list yeah I, I do think we can blame sometimes the american media machine right. because you know in asia they whether it's not i'm not even talking about china and how strictly they censor stuff but even in maybe yeah. korea I mean, they're in, they're in asia in general to various levels, there's a stronger linkage between what the government wants to promote as good society and media. Like, those are going to be more, like, 
coalesced into one. There's a lot more. The, the morals just all different, man. The yeah. morals, the morals, and you know, values are just going to be different. It's almost like more comparable. What I would say to like 1930s American morals, or like maybe 1950s, definitely pre 1970s morals. Uh, Asia's like still like that, to be honest. For better or worse, right? You guys decide. Um, Andrew, last but not least. Obviously, there are reasons why Asians push their kids into STEM fields, right? Like STEM fields, traditionally, I do think it's changing right now in 2023. We're considered the most stable and the least image-based because obviously us, we all have careers that are based off image, right? Sometimes it is tough as an Asian, right? So you want to put your kids in the fields where like only delivering on the equation or figuring out the algorithm or figuring out the medical problem is the answer, right? You don't want to be in high level banking or marketing or finance, something where like, I guess it's very like relationship based. Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough. I feel like for nerdy parents who are raising a nerdy kid and maybe the parents aren't super social, you got to find a balance for the kid. You got to get that kid in social interactions and social systems somehow so that they develop sociality. Because we all know a lot of nerds who are very smart, but they're like kind of shut-ins, they're introverts. And how are they ever going to really live like a good social life? Or by the time they get older and they finally decide they want to, it's very, very hard to change, right? Yeah, I think it's tough because, no, would you agree that the majority of, like, high-level hoopers are probably not STEM majors? Oh, yeah, for sure. Probably, what, 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10 of, like, high-level hoopers are not necessarily... I mean, I, let's just say it's 8 out of 10. So what do you tell, say to, like, Asian parents that are like, yeah, I wanted my son to play basketball, but then all of his teammates do not care about school or <laughs> care about school as much as I want them to, so why would I let my son play basketball? Man, I think going back to what you were saying about putting them in a field or environment that accommodates the best out of the values you're looking for for the kid is like, I don't know, put them in like an Asian league or like with other like, you know, kids who are like do good at school, but they also enjoy playing basketball or soccer or whatever sport that they want to play in. But like just put them in an environment that fits what you want them to be. Right, right. It's not like... A hundred out of a hundred basketball teams, all none of them care about. Yeah, sport, don't put right? them like, like just find the ones. Don't put them with do, like the right? AAU hood hood kids or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that you can position them in a thing that has best of both worlds, and I think that goes back to my original point, Andrew. How come people feel like you can only be one or the other? I think you can be like a nine out of ten nerd, and why can't you be a nine out of ten in a something else? But anyway, Andrew, that leads us into your takeaways. Yeah, my takeaways is that right now in America. It is great to be an Asian nerd. There is no other time in American history that it was this good to be an Asian nerd. But I just spent all this, the last couple of points telling you how bad it is. Yeah, so obviously being an Asian nerd, is it not as fun or not as cool as being like a white nerd in America? Yes, because we're in America and that's how America is designed. So that's just a little bit of truth that you're just gonna have to accept for now. Yeah, However- That was the part that was going, uh, that was a pretty viral debate in the thing. Yeah, but to me, hot it's topic, not a debate. It's literally no debate. It's just how it is. But but here's things that you could do about it. And here's what you should consider as an Asian nerd. Guys, the world's economies are moving in your favor. The world is getting nerdier, more techie, right? All the biggest viral, most viral people of the past five years right. were nerds, whether it's Elon, Josai, CZ, Zuckerberg, even if you want to say same, Bankman Freed, uh, who kind of messed up, right? Anyways, and then number two, the knowledge on how to better yourself is more accessible and plentiful than it ever has been. So whether we're talking about style guides, workout, trainer, the gurus, the advice videos, the support community, the role models, all the procedures you could do, all these things are more plentiful and accessible for you to change yourself and better yourself. So it's like, almost like you live in the information age and if you're a nerd, you understand that you do. So it's just like, just use the, the information to your advantage, right? And then also Asian men are more successful. There are more powers of position and have more leverage in society. A lot of them are more CEOs, right? Uh, as we know, a lot of the Indian CEOs and even a lot of like other East Asian CEOs and everybody else, they're just, Asians are just rising up in general. And then also I would say that it is more frowned upon to bully geeks and nerds than it was 20, 30 years ago. If you guys think it's bad being an Asian nerd today, then you can only imagine what it was like being an Asian nerd 30 years ago. It was worse I think my biggest thing is like, I just hate the way people buy into the societal constructs that are like built by the Western world. Mm -hmm. Like in Asia, if you have someone like a Demos Chang or you have somebody that is like half, half, you know, and obviously some of that is just genetic, like on a looks based basis, but they have like cool nerds that are getting 
everything they want out of life in Asia. Yep. Just because we don't have that archetype in America, I just always refuse to, you know what I mean? Like, why, why can't you be 10 out of 10 into school and being a scholar and academics or, or whatever given field that you're in and then be like six, seven, or eight out of nine or nine out of 10 in a different field? Right. I just don't understand why people can't like mix and match. And it is true in America, I think the way that things are segmented, it does make the mixing and matching of like opposing identities more difficult. But would you say with technology and the internet, it's totally doable now? Oh, 100%. You know, with social media being so big, like whatever lane you're playing, you can like market it or you can do it. And you can, that entrepreneurship is like so easy to, you know, do now yeah. you know, with, you know, with social media now. Like everybody can be like teaching some type of like nerdy thing, nerdy topic or lesson, finance. Or anything. Like, Dude, you can throw you yourself know, out there. Yeah, be entrepreneurial about your identities. If you mm -hmm. feel like your identity that you have is not, like, being rewarded fairly or treated well, which we all just listed a bunch of reasons why it potentially may or may not, depending on the fishbowl of society that you inhabit, then there are a ton of yeah. moves you can bust. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, my last thought is, like, you don't have to give up the STEM field, but you can also do one other thing that is... Clearly not STEM. Like, Possibly let's, not gaming, though. Yeah, let's no, say I you're... I wouldn't pick gaming. <laughs> Guys, no don't, disrespect. Don't put 9 out of 10 yeah. in gaming either. Yeah, right? don't be like, all right, I'm 9 out of 10 on STEM, and the other one that I pick is gaming. <laughs> Maybe not gaming, guys. I think there's good reason for that. But, yeah, I mean, let's say you want to be really into basketball, play a lot of basketball while you're a STEM major, or you're a STEM major and you're really into UFC, MMA, fight, you know, like mixed martial arts, whatever. Maybe you're really into style. Maybe you, you happen to be right. one of these STEM nerds who's, like, who's, super who's into on the dressing cool. You, yeah. you know, it's like you're on Dude, Quora for the comp side, and then you go Nobody to the said that you can't be cool while still being good at your STEM subject. Nobody ever said that. Hollywood you, did say that, though. Or Hollywood implied that. Honestly, I think a lot of your parents thought that, and your parents didn't oh. believe that you could be cool and a nerd and good at school at the same Self time. Self-agency. Yeah, not to, not not fully to their fault. You know, I think they're very fearful, and they're just, like, doing what they know. But you got to understand, they just, guys. Yeah, they just knew what they knew, especially yes, whether yeah. they were, like, STEM themselves or not STEM. They just knew what they knew. Yep. And you got to know that they only knew what they know, but now you know what you know. You and you know, gotta know that. you got to know that. <laughs> yeah, you know what they know, so you just know that you know more and you know this world more than they. Anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Um, and also, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. Do you feel like that it's more media's fault or reality's fault? And what constitutes reality? Is it your parents, your culture, your look, whatever, how you are as a person, your own personality that you're born with? You let us know in the comments down below. This discussion could go on and on. We might make more videos about this. Of course, it is the Hot Pop Boys from frivolous to serious. We're talking about it all. Thank you for joining us today, Nelly Nell Chen. Until next time, let us know in the comment section. We out. Peace. Peace.